Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Someone sent me an email yesterday telling me a funny story, which I thought was very, very entertaining. And it reminded me of a similar story I don't think I've ever told on this channel. And um, it's a story I've told a lot of my friends. I think I can tell it now because it's been over 10 years. Um, not that there's like a statute of limitations or anything on it, at least not legally, but, but the people involved in the story might have wanted a little more time to pass before I told it. But uh, I'm not sure if this guy would want me to say his name, but it's an email entitled, I Became a Lawyer. I Became a Lawyer. And he said, uh, hey, Steve, check this out. My son uh, was 16 and was in a vehicle with a friend. And they were one county over. And somehow the car wound up on the porch of a house. And you know, Hey, it happens, right? The incident ended with a summons or two, and my son's friend then claimed my son was driving. The homeowner said he found more damage to his house, and the case now involved a lot of money. So the man says, I went to the courthouse primarily to defend and help my son. Now, I was wearing a nice suit. It was a little rough shape, but it looked kind of expensive. And I was carrying a briefcase at the time, and I ended up talking to an assistant DA who never asked me to identify myself, and I did not volunteer my relationship to my son. So the guy is walking around the courthouse, dressed nice, sees the assistant DA, and says, hey, can I talk to you about this case? And uh, DA says, sure. And so they pull the case out, they start talking about it, and he says, well, I'm just trying to do what I can to help this guy. And never said he was an attorney, though. I explained that uh, the kid involved in this uh, didn't really know how to drive, and was a passenger in the vehicle. So he was the passenger. He can't be responsible for what the driver does. And so the DA said, oh, okay, we can, we can cut some kind of deal here, and, and went easy on the kid. And uh, it ended up where uh, the kid did not get in any serious trouble. After the event was over, I realized that the assistant DA may have assumed I was an attorney, and therefore, because of an attorney from another county over, unknown to their staff. So, obviously, defendants from a county over. Guy shows up, wants to talk about that. You don't recognize him, but hey, it's a county over, right? He goes, I think my well-worn suit and conducting myself in a quiet and confident manner carried the day. I had learned earlier that the less said meant the less to defend. The talk with the assistant DA probably took less than 20 minutes. That was my total effort as an attorney. <laughs> I enjoy your podcasts. And that's a great story. And I have no problem with any of that because DAs and so on should not make assumptions. So I've gone to court many, many times on behalf of people who've hired me to go to court for them. And I'm carrying a suitcase quite often. I'm often dressed nice. I don't wear T-shirts to court. And I walk in and I'll often say, my name is Steve Leto. I represent so-and-so. And by using the phrase, I represent so-and-so, I am telling them I am an attorney. But I've almost always filed an appearance, which is a piece of paper that tells the court, I am Steve Leto, an attorney, representing this person in this case. Please send all notices to me, and I will show up and talk to you about the case when the time comes. That's what that means. So when someone walks in and there's no appearance in the file, sometimes attorneys get retained really, really late. There's no reason that an attorney can't show up who didn't file an appearance simply because he got there so late. That would be on the DA or the assistant DA to say, by the way, have you filed an appearance yet? And in that case, the guy probably just said, well, I'm not an attorney. This is actually my son we're talking about. At which point the DA should have said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't talk to you about your son's case because you're not an attorney. I can talk to the both of you maybe, but you know he needs to be in here because technically right now, I'm talking to somebody who's not an attorney about someone else's case. But it sounds like it was an honest mistake that just happened. So I'm going to tell you a funny story. And part of the story hinges on the fact that um, it involves a relative of mine with the same last name. So my last name is Leto, L-E-H-T-O. And there, at one point in time, were only three attorneys in Michigan named Leto. I think that's still true. And I had spoken to both of the other two and made sure, but it turns out we're not related. Uh, I was wondering if we were, because it's, you know, it's a Finnish name, and uh, the fact is only three of us, so there was always a chance that we could be distantly related, but we're not, as far as I know. 
And uh, I knew one of them quite well. Uh, he was over in Macomb County. And the other one was down in Wayne County. And the one in Wayne County was actually uh, an assistant prosecutor at one point in time. So my relative who got a ticket, got a ticket. And he called me and said, hey, can you represent me on this ticket? I understand you do a lot of traffic tickets. And I said, well, I could. But the problem, of course, is because my last name is the same as your last name. There's a good chance that when we go to court, they're not going to be as willing to cut me a deal on your behalf because they are going to suspect that you're not paying me. It's always better for them to assume that the attorneys are retained and being paid because that little bit of extra pain involved there uh, is something they take into account. So if someone shows up and they brought their dad, who's an attorney, I understand he wasn't, but I'm trying to make a point here. They go, oh, Junior here is getting free legal help. This isn't costing him anything. So they're not that impressed that you brought an attorney. But if someone walks in who's representing you on a ticket and they think, oh, he's paying this person, they go, oh, okay, he's taking it seriously, but also he's already paying some money, so it's already costing him. I have actually used that as a Hail Mary last-ditch argument with, a district, with, with an attorney, with a prosecutor. I've actually had a prosecutor look at me and go, dude, I'm not cutting your guy any deal at all. All of your arguments fail, okay? Go away. And I've actually said, well, let me say one last thing. My guy paid me a lot of money to be here. He's out a ton of money. So he's already paid somewhat for what's happened to him. Can't you cut us a little bit of slack just to justify my existence? I didn't say to help out all attorneys out there who need to be hired for things like this, but that's kind of unsaid there. And it's implied because if I can't get my guy any slack on this ticket, he won't hire an attorney in the future. And he might tell his friends, I hired an attorney and got nothing extra. The guy said, okay, fine. And he cut me some slack. So I called up a friend of mine with a different last name. I apologize for the edits. I'm simply coughing and clearing my throat. So I, I called a friend of mine who's an attorney, a good friend of mine. And I said, hey, I need you to do a favor for a relative of mine. He got a ticket, obviously same last name. And all the attorneys understand this. He goes, not a problem. Send me the information. So I send the ticket to my friend. My friend files the appearance. And then I, I call up my relative and say, hey, my friend's going to take care of you. And I get them together and they go on their way. Somewhere down the road, I get a note from my relative saying, hey, Steve, thanks a lot. Your friend hooked me up and we got it taken care of. And I said, oh, good. Because the ticket was actually kind of serious. Um, it was a lot over the speed limit. Now, you can be five over, 10 over. You can be a lot over. And this person was a lot over. Now, there were some mitigating factors there, such as the guy did not give the cop a hard time and he wasn't drunk and there was no accident. He was simply driving a lot over the speed limit. And so my friend, the attorney, called me and goes, Steve, let me tell you a funny story. He goes, I went into court with your relative and um, they pulled out the file and the cop and the prosecutor were laughing at me about how far over the speed limit your relative was driving, as in a lot over the speed limit. And um, he looked at the name and he goes, oh, oh, is he related to the attorney named Leto? Now my friend thought, oh, the cover's been blown because now they realize that he's related to an attorney but he's here with someone else. Maybe I'm doing a favor, but my friend's not going to lie to a prosecuting attorney. So he says, yes, he is. And the guy goes, oh, I can cut him a deal then. <laughs> so now my friend is thinking, Steve could have come in here on his own and done this because he would have gotten a deal as a favor from this guy who says he knows him. Here's the thing. I do know a bunch of prosecutors. I know a bunch of prosecutors. Uh, the last ticket I handled for somebody was in front of a prosecutor in a different court than this one, but not far away, who I've been dealing with for over 20 years. Hey, how you doing? I saw the guy again, and I see him every period, you know, periodically. I see him every now and then because he's the prosecutor for this one town. Handle a lot of tickets there, apparently. 
So the prosecutor says to my friend, you know, we'll cut him a deal because he's related to that Leto attorney. And uh, so my friend goes in with the uh, relative of mine. They stand up, put it on the record. They leave. And as they're walking out of the courthouse, my attorney friend passes by the assistant prosecutor who waves and says, tell Mike I said hi. (laughs) Mike Leto, the attorney who's the prosecutor was in Wayne County. Now, my friend just waved and kept walking. Now, it was already on the record. The whole deal was done. But he said it was at that point he realized that when he was asked, oh, is he related to the attorney, Leto? That guy assumed there was only one of us named Leto, and there's three of us. And yes, he is related to the Steve Leto, but not the Mike Leto. But my friend very carefully said, Steve, I thought he was talking about you. (laughs) So... My relative got a lucky break due to a mistaken identity situation. And this gentleman here didn't tell me what state he's in, but he managed to apparently get his son uh, a reduced charge on a case because uh, an assistant prosecutor assumed he was a lawyer, but he did such a good job of how he comported himself that they got him a better deal for the kid, and they all walked out of the courthouse better off for all of it, And uh, it may have been a case of mistaken identity. These things happen. So when I heard the story in the email, it reminded me of the story with my relative and my friend uh, who was asked about whether or not my relative was related to an attorney named Leto. And yes, he is. Sure, that's, yeah, of course. (laughs) He could have also said, hey, tell Neil I said hi. Because the other attorney's name was Neil Leto. He was in Macomb County. So there you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why.